Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have one of the sexiest voices and also producers and DJs from New York, Mr. Roland Clark. Good evening. How are you? I like sexy. I like that word. Well, mm. it, it is true. Uh, I checked your uh, Spotify. You have over 600,000 followers, listeners, and uh, probably most of them are women. I don't know. I, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm single, so I don't think that maybe I think oh they're just. Oh my crazy. God, you're even single. You know, uh, while you were joining us, I was with my girlfriend and we were talking that now with social isolation and the pandemic, we even have more opportunities to reach out to somebody, mm -hmm. even across the world, because of technology. How did the pandemic hit you? How, how did it hit your, your uh, artistic career? It actually, um, it got better because, really? yeah, I don't like sitting still. It's like, I, it's hard for me to sit still. I think I have ADHD or something like that. So normally I jump in my car and just go for a drive. Um, but I couldn't do that because they had us locked in. So I was forced to be creative and to write songs. And I just did more. How do you typically get the inspiration? And the, I know for me, I use the beats, but but you're also a producer yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you come up with the songs? Do you first write the lyrics and the melody? No. I'm, a, I'm a random writer. I never do anything on purpose. It's, I just do everything by emotion. So I would have to feel a certain way in order to write a certain way. There's no one way. I mean, sometimes it just starts with the sound. If I hear a certain sound, sounds equal emotion to me. I think those things kind of coincide. Yeah. And when I hear a sound, it, it gives me a certain emotion and I start thinking about a concept and a story to go with that emotion, even if I make it up. And then I start writing. Do you imagine a particular scenario or do you look to your life for inspiration? Sometimes. So well, this, is what, this is how I kind of do it for the most part. So you know how like uh, somebody can write a story like once upon a time, there was a blah, 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 blah. Yes. A sound would give me an emotion. The emotion gives me the words. So if I have a sad emotion, I'll just think about a sad situation. And there's hundreds and thousands of sad situations. It could be love, it could be death. So there's so many situations that could be sad and I just hone in on certain words. So let's say if I write one word in a sentence, that dictates the next sentence I'm going to say. So it's, it's, it, just, it just comes out. I don't really think about it. It just comes out. Whatever comes out first, that's what it is. I, I really go back and change lyrics. Wow, really? So you are uh, improvising as, as you go along? I, I, I'm, I, I improvise because that's how life works. We don't plan things. We just do it. How long um, did, it, did it take you to reach uh, such high and fame? I don't think about myself in those terms. Uh, I'm a pretty normal guy. Like I don't have a Maserati. <laughs> Success is a, is a weird thing. Like where I feel like I'm not successful, somebody else might see me as very successful. There's always more to do. What I notice is that most uh, artists that produce, that create, they don't really feel the fame or the effect that they have on the listeners or the audience. I see in your biography, you have releases on Defected. You have, uh, um, is this Star 69? That's Fat Boy Slim and myself, a uh, wow. song called What The Fuck. Yes. That we did back in 99, it's still kind of going pretty strong. Yes, and then you also have collaborated with, uh, with contemporary legends like Mark Knight, Dimitri Vegas, uh, Duke Dumont, uh, you have uh, received uh, BBC Hall of Fame award yeah. together with Pete Tong. I think this is success. To me, this okay. is <laughs> I mean, I look at it like, because I'm a workaholic, so I look at it like it's just work. And like I said, I don't um, celebrate the work. I, rather, I just put my head down and do the work. I wish one day I could learn how to celebrate the work, like give a big party. <laughs> <What is the dream laughs> for myself 
of Roland Clark, what is your dream? What is your, if you are going up so far, what is the mm -hmm. next step? Where, where are you heading? Well, I, I'm, I, I don't just write house music. I'm, I do other genres. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I do pretty much all the genres. Mm. Some I do with the assumed names. Like I have an uh, adult ego by the name of Jesus Jackson. And I did a record with Fat Boy Slim, I want to say in 2007. And that particular song is an R&B record that made it to the show Grey's Anatomy. Oh. And they've been using it for a long time. Like they, they didn't just use it once. And uh, one day I turned on the TV and I saw the whole cast of Grey's Anatomy singing my song. <laughs> that must have been a trip. For like 20 minutes and then I went back to work. Because <laughs> it was just like, oh look, that happened. So I don't know, I think I would feel successful if the day is when I can um, start helping other people, you know, with financially in my life. You know, I can go, oh, you need a house? Here's a house, you know, or, you know, I can start a foundation or start a nonprofit. I think that's where anybody would feel um, fulfilled is when you're able to do things for other people. That's yeah. the ultimate higher purpose. Uh, if yeah, and I'm, I'm right now, cut, like I said, I have my head down and I'm working, so it's kind of hard. Well, not hard. You can always do things for other people, like the small is opening the door, but I want to do bigger things for people that I know and love. And love. Just kind of like start a school for whatever is, that's needed. In reality, most of our kids, because I have a 12-year-old in the other room, they're just uh, glued to the computers. And mm -hmm. they get all their information, education from uh, from YouTube. And yeah, it's really nothing wrong with it as long as they're not getting the wrong information, you know? How, how would you know? Yeah. <laughs> Set up the foundation, maybe not even for teenagers, maybe even for, for the middle school uh, to start this. I think it will be great to have a class in manners or yeah. in ethics, human ethics. They don't teach that in school. How, how, to, how to listen and hear your own voice. This is very, very uh, crucial for each individual to be successful. Yeah, most, most kids learn that the hard way, unfortunately. And why, why wait? Just get them while they're early, get them while they're young. Do you think now with the pandemic, we have a chance for this to change? No, <laughs> because <laughs> the world is waking up slowly but surely, but it's almost like there's something fighting the progress of good. And I don't want to say that it's evil, but the more people that wake up is you see on the other side, the more people that do stupid things like we have, not to talk about politics, but we have a president that's inherently evil. He's like the, an evil villain in a movie. You couldn't write that guy into a part. It's like, <laughs> he's just, not a good person and he's the leader of the free world and it's not even an opinion it's like a fact there's documented things of what he does and um are you are you talking about the the, the new uh trump? no donald trump <laughs> oh, the, the one that that just yeah no not the new one the new one is great yeah but the one yeah i, I had a chance to visit my sister back in california this year and mm -hmm. uh uh, when I was watching Donald Trump, I, I didn't get that great feeling about him. But when I got to the States, I, I saw a lot of, even my colleague DJs, they were for him. They said that he did great things for the small business. They, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> um, what he did was, he's a con man. It's like um, smoke and mirrors, right? Uh -huh. So what he'll do is he'll give billions of dollars to these huge corporations and a lot of his friends own these corporations. With him giving billions of dollars to these huge corporations, it's like a trickle down effect. He'll just kind of throw some money at small business, short term, he didn't change anyone's lives. So if you get money from someone, that doesn't make them a good person. He just gave money. It's like smoke and mirrors. Like I'll give you this and by the way, here, you know, like, you know. So no, he was, he's not a good president at all. Um, he's, he's inherently racist. <laughs> Like, I can't think of anyone who I can say, like, because look, at the end of the day, most people don't own small businesses. Who, like, <laughs> so if your DJ friend said he was good for me because I own a small business, well, what about the other millions of people that don't? Like, he's terrible. <laughs> yes, yes. You know? 
So yeah. it's a selfish thing. In other words, if, if you're not helping everyone and you're only help, helping a select few people, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? So you have to kind of do it for everyone, not just your friends. And what I notice also is that, that uh, the world, we think that we have separate uh, uh, governments, separate countries. And what I'm seeing now is that everyone, the whole world is looking up to the States. So yeah. when you're saying the leader of the free world, it's- Yeah, well, not anymore. The sad part is they don't look at us anymore for moral, uh, moral justice and have the, moral, the morality high pitch anymore because of him. One man ruined that whole thing for everyone. Like no one's asking America what we think anymore. Only probably because of money. We do have a lot of money here, but that's the only reason. There's no love for America uh, for the sake of loving America anymore. Well, I, I don't really agree with that. I, I, I think that the movies and Hollywood have, and the music industry have mm -hmm. done enough uh, to really touch the hearts of millions of the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why we follow. We didn't have Halloween here in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. Now we have Halloween. <laughs> so that did it for you, Halloween? <laughs> well, no, but, but it's uh, connected to you. Um, yeah, but a, a lot of things that's around the world that we never had is it's connected to everywhere else. Look, that's just cultures sharing uh, sharing our gift of whatever that culture is. Um, I'm talking about a, a bigger picture when it comes to how the world sees us. And when I say the world, sometimes I mean other governments because governments pretty much control their country for the most part. And if the governments aren't looking to us for answers or even participation, um, that's not good for the, for America because if someone's American and they go somewhere, they don't look at that person as if they're an individual anymore. They look at them like, oh, you're American. You, you must have voted for that man, you know? So <laughs> it's just bad. Have you, you know? been able to tour the world much and see that firsthand? Oh yeah. I mean, since before COVID, yeah. But um, I always feel, I, well, in the beginning of me traveling, I'm, I always went as like a spectator. Like I'm going to look around and, party and girls and blah, 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 blah. But the older I got, the more I wanted to talk to somebody who had nothing to do with that world so I can get a, a gauge on what it's actually like living there. Mm. Um, I'll okay. give you a prime example. I was in Dubai yeah. was some years ago. And uh, this Englishman was yelling at the front desk guy, finger in his face, just yelling at him like, you did this, da, 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 da. And the front desk guy had a blank look on his face, just like, no emotion. So afterwards, I went up to the guy and goes, hey, how could you let that guy talk to you like that? I would have knocked him out, you know, da, da, da. He goes, it's against my religion to raise my voice in anger. I said, well, what's your religion? He goes, I'm Muslim. I didn't know that. In, my, in America, they would have you think Muslims were the worst people on earth. Yes, yes, that's true. I didn't know. And I found out, I asked him yeah. more questions about his religion. He goes, uh, he told me this one thing about their religion that, um, if someone comes to your house, a stranger, and they need a place to sleep or stay, you're not allowed to ask them why they're there until three days of them being there. You, you feed them, you clothe them, you do, you help them. Then after the third day, you get to ask them, okay, so what brings you to my door? And they say, we want- And they say, and you can either ex keep extending a hel helping hand or not. But that's great. I think that's a great thing, you know, that you know, you, you morally are responsible for another human being for the minimal of three days. Now, that wouldn't work in the United States because there's so many dangerous people <laughs> here. There's dangerous people everywhere, but I think that's a great thing. When I, when I first heard it, I was like, wow, I wish the world was like that. I wish people could just let people in for three days without question and just help them. I think that um, Muslim religion, I've also uh, had friends and we spoke and all religions are really powerful and, and they really uh, build the foundation of moral. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe in a higher power yourself? Oh yeah, I believe in a, a, um, a higher power. No matter what name you give it, there's an organization to this universe that's been proven 
what I what I don't believe is that we know as much as we think we know about that thing that created all things. I don't believe we can put it in a box like, well, this is that, and he said that, and it's like, no, you don't. You don't know that. Like, you probably feel that, but we don't know. And I'm okay with not knowing. But I do know that this isn't a mistake. Like me talking to you isn't a mistake over this technology. This isn't like some big random mistake. So why do you think it's happening all this with COVID? Why, what, what is the big plan? Because, because things happen. I think because things happen. That's like saying, why do you think I stomped my toe? That happened. You know, there's viruses in the world. The virus got out either by mistake or on purpose. Doesn't matter. It's out. And things happen in the world. I think if we try to think uh, that this is a Machiavellian type of thing, like some evil force is in a big chair rubbing his cat, <laughs> going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's how, that's what the movies do. But sometimes things happen. It's how we react to those things that make that thing uh, powerful or not. Do you think that the vaccine will will save us? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Um, from my understanding, they've been working on this vaccine for a lot of years now. They had 75% because COVID isn't new. Just COVID-19 is new. Yeah. So the original COVID, from my understanding, was SARS. Yeah. So they were working on things, a vaccine for SARS, and they just pretty much finished it out for COVID. To my understanding, that's what this vaccine is. There's so many people in the world that, that don't want to take the vaccine because of these rumors, like, oh, this they said this and this said that, that person said that. I'm one you know? of them. I'm one yeah, of them. Well, but at the end of the day, you can either take a chance and not take, but there's going to be a, I think the way the world is set up now or the, world, the way the world is setting itself up is if you do not take the vaccine, you'll be limited to some things that you can do in this world. You probably won't be able to fly. You probably won't be able to go to certain supermarkets because this didn't just happen to a small part of the world. This happened to the world. So yep. there are certain things that you'll be excluded from until you prove that you, you took this vaccine, which is kind of scary, but life is scary at the end of the day. So I think we're just, I'm kind of happy that I'm experiencing this in my life. Now I, I got to see something that was that, that the whole world experienced However sad it is that people died, but I've experienced something. You know, you get to tell your grandkids, yo, when I was younger, 300,000 people died. It's like, oh, tell me, tell me what happened. And you got a story to tell, yeah, you know. We had, so, we had to stay at home and, and just. Yeah, we had to stay in the house. There was no hovering cars, you know. So um, as, as sad as it is, it, it's something that happened and it's happening as we speak and we just have to it's how we react to this thing that makes us who we are and you know that's it <laughs> much fun thinking about the, your next steps in the in in the music what, what is um what is coming up for you what are your next steps i'm working on a, a random alternative rock thing like I'm a random writer so the stuff that I'm writing now is basically that's not house music at all like so if I post it to my Facebook people will kind of look at some people will like it and then most people will be like well this isn't what I'm used to so I'm just kind of looking for people to help me promote and market that brand of music and just just it's almost like starting all over again but I can't just let the record sit in my iTunes and just die you know it's a really good song go faster and um, there's another one I wrote called, um, what's the name of that song? I got too many records. <laughs> oh, it's called, um, I'm too young to care. So it's called too young to care. So yeah, I got a, a couple of those records that, that need to come out. And, do you work by yourself always, but, or do you have a team? No, I mean, I have best friends that I, we all do the same thing, but when we start working together, it's, we're not friendly. Like. <laughs> like, the guy who taught me everything I know, his name is Calvin Gaines. And I've known him since I was 15. And he wrote like paparazzi for Lady Gaga. He went on to write six songs for Destiny's Child and Whitney Houston. Wow. Platinum records all over his wall. Wow. But we writing together, it's, it's like I'm 15 again. He's teaching me things. And 
he really teaches me things to this day. Like, I'm like, I thought I knew everything, but I don't. He still teaches me. Um, Todd Terry's one of them too. Like with Todd, he gives me more freedom than Mo, than Calvin. So if I'm working with Todd, he'll go, here's a track, go do your thing. And whatever I do is fine because he's like, well, who am I to say it's wrong? You know, you're Roland Clark. <laughs> And I can't tell him his track is garbage. So I'm like, you're Todd Terry. Who am I to say your track sucks? <laughs> Todd Terry. So we do that like once a year. We might put out a record once a year. Together. I, yeah, that's my boy. How, how many records do you release uh, per month? Mm. On average, three to four. Wow. Yeah, so some of them are not going to work. Some are going to fail, no matter how great I think they are. It's just too many records out there. Yes. So I usually have to re-release and that might not even work. Sometimes I put out records years later after I release it. And then somebody goes, Hey, I heard your new record. And it's like, yeah, that came out five years ago. <laughs> yes. You know, there's too many records out there for, to every, for the light to shine on all of them. So I'm happy if one does great every couple of months. Is there anything you would like to share with our audience? Because we don't know, who will be watching? Hopefully, we will get to inspire a lot of a lot of people, young people. Um, what can I share? Something deep and dark, or something light and fluffy? I don't know. Just <laughs> just keep supporting the music because look, at the end of the day, that's the besides the music, oxygen is the only thing that connects us. Ooh, that's a lyric. I'm gonna write that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Besides music, it's true though, oxygen is the only thing that connects us. Everybody loves music. I never heard anybody in their life goes, turn it off. I hate all music. Like even Hitler probably had a favorite record, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's that thing that connects us all, air and music. So I just think the, the language of love, I, I, we just could, we, 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 we get hit straight to the heart. Ooh, yeah, music does that to you. I don't know if love does that to you, but music definitely. Plus, it's right. I believe in music more than I believe in love. So we have we have two news. <laughs> two, two. One is that you're single, and the, the second one. I'm single. I'm so <laughs> I've been single for a long time. You know what it is. I I'm not average. I tried my I tried to be average, and when I tried to be average, not that I'm special, but I'm not like honey. I'm home. You know, I'm not that guy. Yeah. So when I try to be that guy, I meet people that ex that like guys like that. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not that guy, you know? So I'm, I'm pretty much say I'm going to be myself and whoever comes in my pathway and they like me, come on in, let's try it. You know, I'm, I don't really um, subscribe to, you have to get married. You have to do this. You have to do that. I'm like, I've done that. You know, now I think it's just about connecting and having, um, companionship, no matter who it is. I have female friends that I would never think about having sex with. Like, because you're my friend, like, that's it. You're hot, but you're my friend. And then I have some random people that I'm like, <laughs> so it's it's random, you know, it's like the universe. Well, that's crazy. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I don't know. I'm just here and I'm single. I'm sure the right one will come at the right time. And, and no such thing. That's what I'm talking about. See, people say stuff like that. There's no such thing as the right one. We will talk in 10 years. There's a hundred thousand right ones. Yeah. I bet you there's a hundred thousand right ones out there. And one just have to kind of pop up. <laughs> and I don't necessarily think that they're in the United States. Like they should. Everybody goes, oh, I met my soulmate. Like, where? Like, he lives three blocks away. It's like, really? Like, three blocks? How come they couldn't live in Texas? Like, how come your soulmate isn't this Chinese kid in Hong Kong? Like, what? You, it just happens to be your soulmate lives right down the street from you? Like, that's why I don't, I'm like, I don't, I don't buy it. But because, because they say that we need to connect, uh, we have, the, we need to have the same, to share the same vision about life, the, the same morals in order for marriage to work or long-term companionship, as you say. And over here, we call it being equally yoked. So I think being equally yoked means if you, if you, you don't have to necessarily believe the same things, but you have to respect the other person's belief. 
and what they believe. If you can do that, that's half the battle. Because people think you're supposed to be alike. And it's like, well, if you're alike, then there's, there's no growth. You, you can't find anything else about the person that, that might amaze you. You know, like, ooh, I didn't know. Like, you know what she does? She, she sews socks for dogs or whatever. You know, like, I think that's crazy. I would, never thought I would date somebody who sold socks for dogs. You know, like, so <laughs> that to me, I like, I like surprises and things like that. And yeah, people, but after, after like two, three years, you get to know everything about the other person. And then after that, I think you said you said the key is to have a good time together, long term companionship, and you want to know the real key. Get into each other's way. You want to know the real key to like a real great relationship? Is to know the most disgusting thing there is about the person yeah. early. So if you have a friend or a girlfriend, you have to know the most disgusting thing about them. And if you're still around, you know what I mean? That's, that to me is a strong thing. Like, like I hate when guys, like not to get off the subject, but you know how guys go, oh, I wish I had two girls, like a threesome, right? Mm -hmm. Then they meet a young lady and she's hot, but they would never say that to her. And it's like, I have a friend like that. <laughs> they would never say that to her. And it's like, and then he'll like look at some porno with some threesomes and he'll go to a strip bar. And it's like for years, he'll keep that secret from her, never knowing that she probably would be down to do that. <laughs> and it's like, dude, why would you tell her that? Oh, you know, she'd probably get mad. So, well, she's going to get mad at something that you like. Then maybe she's not the one for you. You know, so I, be this out early on. I believe in total honesty, because once you start lying about the little things, it's only a matter of time before you start lying about the big things. Wow. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. In conclusion, um, what do you want to, what do you want to, what you already said something to the listeners, but what do you want to wish to Roland Clark? For me, I'm simple now. Maybe like a, a new truck and a, a bigger, a bigger loft. I don't know. For just me, like only me, not no one else. I don't know. See, I, I don't. I'm, I'm. I hate to say I'm too humble because I'm not. I I just want to be in a position to help other people. That's what I would wish for me. Well, I I wish you you do that, you achieve that, and you already for sure help one person, and that's Diva Vocal over here in Bulgaria. Yeah. We're happy to be on on my starting impromptu interviews and and i appreciate really your time uh please do send me your songs i will send you some I will. stuff if we can collaborate on something i will be happy but even if we just meet like that it's it's amazing for me so thank you once again you got it i have a question who are those two people in the picture behind you thank uh, you over here yeah Who's that? That, that's me and my sister Ha, that's funny. I thought that was you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. I'll sing you the song today, actually, because I'm, I'm looking at them right now. Thank you so much. All right. And I'll sing you this audio as well. Take good care. Take good care. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. -bye. Bye.